that makes a really big difference when you're dipping in your brush and then you slide it on the top of the can it doesn't puddle up and leak down the outside of the can it leaks back down through the holes an old timer taught me that one time Well, hey everyone, I want to share a little story with you all. It's a story about my dad's knife. Some folks will take an interest in it and others won't, but that's just the way it goes. Most of you know I've been coming up here my whole life. And throughout my life, at least while my dad was still alive, Whenever it was hunting season or he went out on a trek in the woods, this knife would be hanging from his belt. I always knew there was significance to it, and my dad told me the story behind it when I was a boy, but regretfully, I don't remember it. When you're a kid and a teen, you don't hear everything your dad says <laughs> you know you don't spend enough time with your dad either until he's gone and then you realize you missed your chance but anyway he always wore this during hunting season and I always wondered why it's too much knife for deer hunting as far as I'm concerned. I like a short knife for field dressing. This is a heck of a good woods knife and certainly a substantial weapon if you ever needed one. But too much knife for deer hunting. But regardless, this is what he wore. If it was the month of November, this was hanging from his hip. I remember that he got it in the war and the knife was all burned. In fact, through the handle here, and I'll show in closer detail, it's all black and he left it that way. He salvaged the knife from some place that was burned out. And my dad was one of the early recyclers, you know, recycle, reuse, <laughs> and that's where I get it. So he saw this knife and, and took it and made a handle for it and carried it forever. The handle he made out of slices off the bubble shield on the fuselage there. It was either from the top one or on one of the planes had this big bubble on the bottom. And it was a scrap piece and he cut a bunch of little pieces out of it, fit them on the handle, sanded them all down to fit, and one of them is broken on the top here. Hey, my dad was in the military, in the Air Force, for 24 and a half years. He retired as a major, and whenever he spoke of those years flying with the night fighters and the P-61s, his eyes would really light up, and you can tell those were his glory days. He absolutely loved his years in the Air Force. So, I never knew too much more beyond the stories that he told. And I know that the stories were true because he told them year after year and they never changed. <laughs> so as I'm searching online, I find all kinds of cool stuff about my dad. There was one page called Unsung Heroes and stuff about my dad and about one time when his plane took on enemy fire and the landing gear wouldn't work anymore and they belly landed their plane and all kinds of cool stuff so I come across this book P61 Black Widow Units of World War II I never knew this existed and I'm flipping through the pages scanning stuff and I come across this portrait of three airmen. The man in the center is my dad, but look what's hanging from his hip. <laughs> this knife, see the metal band right there? 
right there. I couldn't believe it. And then there was other pictures of him in there. I knew that he got the knife in the war, and I knew a little bit about it, but I never knew that it was the knife that he was wearing during the war. I thought it was like after. You know, he found it in the war and then repaired it afterwards. I didn't know that it was the knife that he carried all those years. And this was, he was a second lieutenant here, and he retired as a major, so he carried the knife for a while. So I thought that was really amazing, and I wish I knew about that. But what's more amazing is I'm Googling this and that. I'm all intrigued now, all right, as you can well imagine, all right? This was my dad, so I was like learning about my dad, okay? So I come across this model models of World War II aircraft, and this is the P-61, okay? And all of the planes during that time had paintings of girly girls on the planes. There was all kinds of ones, and the plane that my dad flew in was the Hustlin' Hussy. So I come across these P-61 models, and when you buy a model or you're putting together a model, you're going to have the little decals that come with the kit. And there on the decal says the Hustlin' Hussy, and I thought that was cool, but what really slammed me was on the decal that goes on the model has my dad's name, Gene B. Declos, right there on that model. So all the thousands of that model that were sold and people that made them have my dad's name on it. I was blown away. I was completely blown away. I'm still blown away by it. So I have this model, and I haven't made a model since I was probably 10 years old or younger. But when my office is done upstairs, I'm going to make this model and I'll get to see how this plane goes together because I know very little about it. So this knife went from a simple token that I inherited from my dad to an absolute treasure. And I don't go in the woods without it. In some of my videos, if you've seen a knife hanging from my hip, it was this one. And I will always carry this now and treasure it. Because I never knew this is what my dad was carrying all those years during the war. Pretty amazing. But I would like to know, any of you knife enthusiasts out there, if you can tell me if this knife was U.S. military issue, or maybe from the Japanese or the Germans or wherever, because I don't know, and I would love to know if this was U.S. issue or if it was from another country. Because I, like I said, regretfully, I don't remember the story behind it. I just wanted to share that little tidbit with you all. <laughs> and when I finally come around to making the model of the hustling hussy, <laughs> I'll share that with you too. <laughs> yeah, so this is a little retaining wall project I've been pecking away at, just doing a little at a time. You see the terrain drops right down. Keeps on going down, all the way down. You can see it goes up, up, up. So down over here, it was quite a drop off. I decided I'd build a little retaining wall and I'm backfilling it a little at a time. Have a level spot. We'll probably put a little picnic table here. It's a nice shady spot during the heat of the day. Gets a little bit more air than up on the porch there. It's coming out pretty good. I'm not being wicked fussy with it, but doing a decent enough job. I've got some big nuggets that I just forget it's a good place to use them. There's no mortar, it's just dry laid stone. I'm going to build it across and dead end about where that shovel is. Yeah, it's coming out pretty nice.
it's fun to make. I've always loved working with stone. I love the whole process of it, even going out in the woods and picking the stone, bringing it back, and then fitting it together like a jigsaw puzzle. I've loved working with stone. I've loved working with round logs and timbers. There's just something about these natural materials that gives me tremendous joy and tremendous pride in the end. I get much more enjoyment out of this than working with brick or block. I never enjoyed doing masonry work with brick or block. So here, decided I'd spend a few hours on this today and then after lunch I'm going to go out back and work on my trail system. I tell you, I must, I must be an old soul from way back in the woods back in the day up here because I, I must have been a, a well digger or built stone foundations or something because I don't know where my love for it comes from, but it must come from somewhere. Yeah, so I got a few more stones to lay up and then I'll have to take the truck up the road and try and find some dirt that I can backfill it with. Because none of these stones were delivered here, and none of the dirt is either. i got to go find it. But I just pick away at it a little at a time, and by the time fall rolls around, this will be done. Yeah. It's coming out pretty decent. Yep. Isn't costing me anything either. Not a cent. Yeah, every job's got to have a foreman. <laughs> Alrighty, time to do the questions of the week. I will try to keep it short and sweet, but ah, there's a lot to talk about. Same group of questions comes in all the time. Am I going to do any more cast iron restoration, more cast iron cooking? Can I show you my cast iron collection, etc., etc.? The answers are yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Uh, my next trip to New York, I'll bring the rest of my cast iron home. I'll do a little show and tell with that. I'm going to be doing more restoration, like this griddle here. This is one I picked up at a junk shop a year or so ago. It was all rusty. I cleaned it up with the vinegar process, and then I restored half of it. I did one coat of seasoning here just to stop it from rusting. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but you can see from here up, it's nice shiny black. I do the seasoning on the extra burner of my gas grill, and I didn't want to do half like that and then turn it to be handling that hot iron. So I did the front like that, and then I did the back, put more oil, did several coats like that, brought it to the nice shiny black, and you'll be seeing this come back to life and come into action in a future video. Now one more question. This is a group of questions I get all the time. I'm going to make a video on this subject in the future. I don't have time right now. But I get a lot of questions like, what do I have to do to leave the rat race? How can I live a life like yours? Um, lots of questions about buying land. Uh, I can't tell you how to leave the rat race because I don't know you personally. I don't know what your level of tenacity is. I don't know what you're willing to sacrifice to get from one point to another. Chasing dreams and conquering dreams requires a great deal of sacrifice. I'm always trading off one thing for another, and a lot of people aren't willing to do that. People want to know about living debt-free. How can they live debt-free? Well, I can't answer that for you either. But really, the principle behind it all about being debt-free, myself, I want to live debt-free. So the solution to that is to not buy things I can't afford. It's that simple, you know, elementary, my dear Watson. That's what it boils down to. I don't go into debt. Now, I'm not going to say that I don't use credit cards because I use credit cards every single day. Every purchase I make is on a credit card, but I pay the balance every month. Credit card companies haven't made a dime from me in probably 20 years, but I have made a boatload of money off of the credit card companies. And I'll talk about that more in depth in the future. 
But to tell you how to get from point A to point B without knowing you personally, I can't answer that. But if you want to make changes, this is where you got to start. Make a list. Make a list of the life that you live now and all the things you don't like about it. All the things you don't like about your life now. Then write down all the things that you want to change. Okay? You live in the city, now you want to live in the country. Make that list. Put the pros and the cons. Then make a list and be sincere about it, but write them down what you are willing to sacrifice. What are you willing to change? What are you living to live with? What are you willing to do to live without, rather? <laughs> Start with that. Okay, get your list going, and then when I make the video, we can talk about all of these things on the list, because most people watching my videos and channels like mine on the same topic all share the same dream, and the dream is to live a simple life, to be out of the rat race. Some people might want to live very rustic in a cabin in the wilderness. Other people just want to live out in the country and have a little farm, but they still want to be able to drive into their driveway and park in the garage and all of that. But make your list. That's a place to start, and we will pick up on this topic again in the future. But you got to start somewhere. Start by writing it down. Decide what you are willing to sacrifice because that's the key ingredient in moving forward. Okay? And we'll pick up again in the future. So that's it for now, folks. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you. And God bless. And don't forget, we have a surprise coming. If all of our plans come together, we got a surprise coming <laughs> next week. See you later. Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss